Hi, my name's Kaiva Rose, and welcome to A Journey Inside the Mind of. Today we're visiting my good friend Nicholas Harper at his gallery called Rogue Buddha in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Nick and I met many years ago, and when we first met, we bonded over magical realism, surrealism, and Victorian fashion. So today I've invited Nick to join us so that we can get into his mind and find out his inspirations as an artist. One thing that I love about your art really is like the capture of innocence mm -hmm. and that portrayal of how, you know, here's this beautiful woman, but then you see all these other objects around her that are seemingly dark, but yet she's so firmly set there's like yeah. a balanced centeredness to all the women that you create yeah. that is really beautiful and I think is like an homage to women which is wonderful which is why I love yeah. your work too I think it really does a good job of capturing the strength of a woman yeah. and then placing these elements as far as like this is the woman's journey right like totally. this is what the woman had to go through so do you yeah. want to speak on that at all for sure yeah well, you know my biggest influence growing up personally was my mom so I was raised by my mom. My father passed away when I was five. So I was raised by her, um, and she was a church cantor and choir director, trained operatically, and dedicated all of her talent and skill singing and musically to the church. Uh, after my father passed away, she took up learning cello, and then she became a master gardener, and then she became a china painter, then she learned flute, and then, you know, it's like she's just constantly reinvented oh herself. So she's been a huge constant support for me with my artwork and just mm -hmm. a source of inspiration that you can redefine yourself constantly mm -hmm. and that, you know, even though she's had tough hardships throughout her life, this idea that we're not victim, mm -hmm. that we are in control and ownership of ourself and how we project ourselves into the universe and how we carry ourselves in the universe. And so that's been a massive influence for me. And so I kind of translate that into the feminine principle then that, um, you know, women are the creators of life, um, the nurturers of life, and that's important. I mean, that's like why we're here. That is so beautiful. I love that these paintings of these women really at their core are coming from your mother's strength. I think yeah, that definitely. is probably one of the most beautiful uses for a painting, you know, yeah. because that is your true experience and that you do read that yeah. in all of your paintings. Well, now we have this thing. beautiful lady back here. This yes. is a classic Nick Harper yeah. painting right here. What is it about these ladies for you? The ladies started out with this desire to paint something that people can connect with. So the human form as a symbol is the most universal form or symbol that humans can identify with. And for me, I've always wanted to paint artwork that is more than decoration, that's kind of a conduit for the viewer um, to reach a deeper sense of themselves. And so I wanted to use the portrait or the figure as the conduit to do that. I wanted to open up the window a possibility for there to be narrative and allegory and universal symbolism. And, um, I paint normal everyday people uh, in the hopes of demonstrating the fact that we all have divinity in us, that we're all equally divine and spiritual as well as worldly. Well, I love that philosophy that, you know, it really is about the everyday individual human. And I think that is probably one thing that artists throughout time have been trying to get across. Is there one visual or writer or any type of art artist that has inspired you in that thought process? Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, his book, 100 Years of Solitude, mm -hmm. uh, was life-changing, spiritually changing, artistically changing, inspirationally changing. It was everything. It, was, it kind of opened up my mind. It was the first magical realism book I ever read. As far as visual artists, Gustav Klimt is a big influence. The pre-Raphaelite artists are huge influences as well. Um, oh, and Ralph Waldo Emerson is probably one of the biggest influences that I have. His... Um, his, he had a wonderful um, speech that he gave at the Harvard Divinity School called the Divinity School Address, which got him kicked out from ever speaking at Harvard again. Oh, wow. But he talked specifically about the individual soul being Christ-like and that we're all called to be, you know, this Christ figure, mm -hmm. that it's not this person that we're uh, adoring, mm -hmm. you know, from afar, far, it's within us. So, um, you know, Emerson and the transcendentalist Thoreau, um, our big influences. Well, thank you, Nick. You know, it's really been a pleasure chatting with you with, through all your art and all your influences. I appreciate your time. I'm sure everybody else appreciates your time because now everybody has plenty of people to go do some research on because that's the one thing about artists. They have a list 
of influences and inspiration for everybody. To that point, can I make one other Absolutely. comment? So another huge influence for me, and one of the reasons I started the Rogue Buddha Gallery was to immerse myself in an environment where I'm surrounded by artists, mm -hmm. where I'm surrounded by people that inspire me, that are creating work that I think is valuable and has a direct connection then to my soul and to my center. And, and then, you know, that goes through my mechanism and gets regurgitated as my artwork. Mm -hmm. But it's being surrounded by people like that, and you're one of those people. So Aww. it's an honor to be here today. So yeah. And to be your friend for so many years, and I to know. watch you grow and change and like go through all of your iterations mm -hmm. of writer. And mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, so. thank you. I really appreciate that. You. This has always been my magical escape. Every time I've come to visit Nick, I always say like I'm going to escape to the magical realm because <laughs> being at this gallery is absolutely transcendent. All of our conversations are absolutely like phenomenal, just take me to new levels and I always leave here inspired and I hope you all get a chance to come visit Rogue Buddha eventually sometime in your lifetime. Minneapolis, Minnesota.